passed her first test, and she has one more test she has to pass tomorrow to, to make sure that she becomes employed um, in this job. So I prayed with her tonight, but I, t I told her we'd pray for her tonight. So you can pray that she can recall the things that she's looking at tonight. Because if she doesn't remember, she only gets two times on the test. If she can't pass the test twice by the second time, um, she's kind of unemployed again. So that's kind of how um, Indiana, um, when you're working for the state of Indiana, that's what they do. So, so we're going to pray for her. Um, I know Doug and... Um, um, Deanna and Fran and um, and Pastor Wayne, they are the people who came with the trumpet on Sunday and played the trumpet. They brought two people up for just recovery. And um, so they're kind of at, at their house tonight and just um, helping some those individuals just to help them in some um, areas of their life and tonight. So um, we can just pray for that. And um, we can pray for Mary as she continues to recover. She Her swelling has gone down and both feet and is looking good. She's still a lot of pain. All right, so we can pray for her. Other things that we can remember tonight, just as we pray, as we start. Anything else that kind of that? Yep. Yep. Oh, we can pray for that. I wasn't going to say that, but I, I'll, just, I'll let you. Since you said it, I'll let you say it. So we pray that her body begins to move inside, so in the right way. So, yeah, so. Oh, well, praises before we pray. Any any praises? Something God's doing good in. Um, I went up and saw my mom yesterday to celebrate her birthday, and um, it was a good time. And um, we hit a lot. We hit a lot of snow on the way home, so I was just glad to get home safely. Of them in the last night, so yeah. So amen. Okay. Not stressed about it. Praise the Lord, Tiffany. But we'll keep praying for that. I know we prayed for it last week and, and that, but we'll continue to pray that. And that's, a, that's a good testimony of what we're going to talk about tonight. So um, I'm glad you shared that because I, I always think it's interesting when that happens. It's like, going, it's like yes, yesterday traveling to my mom's. I was listening to the to the radio, and I was wondering what do I speak about this Sunday, and um, Pastor David, I think it's David Jeremiah, is, is who I was listening to, and he shared a, um, he just shared a beautiful um, illustration I'm going to share on Sunday, and it was just like, it was just like, oh, that that's that's what I'm supposed to talk about Sunday. I mean, it was just, it just went in line with everything, so I was, I was just, I even though it's an illustration that he shared, I turned to my wife and said, man, that illustration will work so well on Sunday. So I think I think that's where I'm supposed to go. So it's just, you know, that. So I just, that's how I took it. So you might think differently after you're here at Sunday. So. <laughs> Well, let's pray. Our wonderful Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the sunshine that's outside tonight. And um, we thank you for the white stuff that's gone. But Lord, we're, we're reminded this morning as we woke up how beautiful your creation is. Um, as much as we, it's April and we're in Indiana and it shouldn't be snowing in April. It's just, just very significant to wake up and see the creation and the and just the detail of your creation it just reminds us there is there is a God. Um, it just reminds us that there is things that are more powerful than we can ever ask or imagine. And, and we just thank you so much that that is visible almost every day. Maybe maybe the snow was just a realization there is a God to help us realize you know there is something and we that we miss in creation every day that you want to give us a glimpse of who you are and whether it's a sunrise or a sunset or 
beautiful skyline or something in the tree. We're just reminded again today of that. And so we praise you for that. And tonight, Lord, um, we thank you that Mary is done with surgery and everything's gone well. We know that she's in a little bit of pain tonight. We're thankful that she's in a different room. But we ask that you would just surround her with your um, your continue um, healing in this process. We just pray that the, the bones with the screws and the um, amputated toe will just heal up just like you're supposed to. There will be no infection of any kind, of any sort. And we ask that you would give her the strength and um, the help and the patience um, as she goes through rehab to be able to get on her feet and um, get around so that she can be home and be with Gary. And we just ask right now that you would just begin that healing touch. We know we've been praying for her, and we know that um, you have been um, already been doing that healing process even before we she even had the surgery. So we just give you praise for that, and we just ask for your continuum. Um, touch upon her body. We pray that you would just be with Gary, um, surround him with your, your patience. I know um, it, he's, she's not home um, and not being home does different surroundings at, at our home. So we just ask that you would just um, just surround him with your peace and your comfort and your strength. And Lord, we also pray that you be with Kristen tonight. Um, we um, love having her and her family here and um, we know that she has a big test tomorrow though and so we just pray right now that as she is home with no kids, that you will help her to concentrate and to study, um, turn off the, any texts that may want to interrupt or anything that um, may want to be um, pushed on her so that um, she can't um, um, just memorize or um, just read to recall for tomorrow's test. But Lord, we do pray that tomorrow as she goes in, that she will just ace the test. We pray that all memory will be you know, just um, flood her mind that if she reads a question it will uh, be an easy question that she says wow I know that and I know that one and I know that one and at the end she'll just give you praise and glory um, for just uh, um, her new job that she's come to really really like and we just pray that that will just continue the process in her life and happen um, we also pray Lord that you would just be with um, us tonight we thank you for the the time that we have here we thank you for um, Tiffany and her praise Lord but we also pray that you would just continue to um, supply the money support um, there um, you know the issues there and at the same time Lord I'm having stress about it but we thankful tonight for just the praise that she has on her lips of saying you know what today um, I just it, it just felt good not to have that stress and or that burden knowing that the Lord's gonna take care of it and so we praise you for that. We thank you that we can be here tonight. And um, we're just so thankful that your word holds true, that where two or three gather, there you are amongst us. And so we just know that you're here, but we just invite you just to be a part of all that we um, talk about and experience tonight. And just um, we just give you the praise and the glory. And we just also, as we um, finish up this prayer, we pray for our um, kids down there and the youth program going on right now in our building. We just pray that you would just... Um, in your wonderful way teach them as tonight's kind of the last night till Sunday when they come back in the afternoon and are rewarded for all their accomplishments and strength we just ask that this would just be a good time for them and we just thank you for our kids and youth and for the volunteers that have spread given their time and their effort and their strength and, um, and abilities of helping these kids and discipling these kids and youth to the glory of God and we just give that to you in Jesus name Amen um, Tonight we're gonna um, we're gonna look at Second um, Corinthians chapter one verses three through four and a few other verses, um, but um, we're gonna talk tonight. Tonight we're gonna kind of talk about comfort. Um, we all need comfort in this day and age. So I, what, what I thought I'd do, what I want you to do, I want all of you to do this for me tonight. Um, we're gonna do an experiment with you. All right, I want you to take your. I'm gonna have to put this on a stand. So I'm gonna give. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer you comfort. And we're going to see if this works. Um, I like you to take your two fingers, and I like you to take your hand, and I like you to cover your two fingers like this, and I want you to squeeze your two fingers as hard as you can. All right? Till I say stop. All right? Now, if you don't do this, that's that's all right. But you're wondering what are we doing? Just just do if you do it right. This one thing will happen, but I'm not going to tell you what will happen. So just take your two fingers and just squeeze them as hard as you can. Don't go don't go like 
wow, that hurts, and then re-squeeze them. You got to squeeze them and just keep squeezing until I tell you to stop. Go. I, I, could, I could sing a song, but I don't know very many songs. I could go, do, 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 do. Just keep squeezing. Just keep, just like keep, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, and just keep squeezing. Now, as you're squeezing, in a few moments, I'm gonna tell you, I'm, tell, I'm gonna tell you to do this. I want you to, don't, don't do it yet. Just keep squeezing. All right. I'm gonna tell you to take your two fingers out like that. You can move your two fingers, but keep this hand just like this. Don't, don't move it. Don't do, do anything to it. You can move it around, but don't open it. All right. Don't go. Like, like that, all right? Keep, keep squeezing. Are you doing this, Virgil? No, he's not doing it. No. <laughs> it's hard to do when you're on the computer, so, and all that. And I know your fingers might look like they're turning blue. That's all right. They're going to survive and all that. It's all right, Anna. Deep breaths, deep breaths. So, all right. So, on a count of three, one, two, three, pull your fingers out. You can move these two if you want, but just keep this one just, just like that. Don't close it anymore. Just keep it like that for a few minutes, so. Um, other praises, Neil's going, oh man, my fingers feel so much better, so, and all that, so, but any other praises as you're waiting, as you're waiting, anything else that God's doing, anybody, anybody do anything fun in the snow yesterday, I mean, some of you have four-wheel drives, I thought you'd probably go out in those four-wheel drive. I wanted to do eight, figure eights in the parking lot, but the snow wasn't sticking in the parking lot. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, in a few minutes, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put your hand straight out, and I want you to open it. Now, don't do it yet. I want you to open it real slow. And if you did this right, if you did this right, your hand will not open. All right? If you, if you really did this right, your hand will stay shut. I mean, it will be as, it'll be like getting out of bed going, oh, my back. That's and, and, and I should advise you, it could hurt. And if it hurts, that's where I'm going to give you comfort, all right, and all that. So so what, what I do, what I'm going to tell you to do here in a moment, I just want you, I'm not going to use this one. I just want you to go real slow and just tell me, just, I think I'll hear you go, that is weird and all that. So it's just amazing what your body will do. So, all right, I think we've given enough time. So, so very slowly open your hand. See if you can open your hand just very slowly. If you open it real fast, is anybody, I mean, I can, see, I can keep my hand like that. So anybody get stiff? Anybody, nobody get stiff? You probably didn't squeeze your hand hard enough. Anybody not get stiff? So, well, if you really want to do it right, you can just squeeze it really, really hard, really, really long for one minute, and um, it will be, it will hurt a lot more. So anyway, so anyway, the reason I told you to do that is I wanted to offer comfort, because a lot of times we get in a place in our lives where it just feels like we're, oh. She's still going. Got it. All right. Did anybody stiffen up? Anybody have stiffen up? All right. Good. I, I always like doing that. Another thing I like doing, if you go in front of doorways, um, you can do this. You can do If you have teens or kids or grandkids, you can go to a door and have them um, take their hands and they, like they're, they're going to be Samson. And you tell them to push with all their might without bending their elbows against the, the doorway like they're trying to push out. And they use their shoulders and all that. And you let them do that for a minute, and then they walk out. You just tell them to put their hands to their side, and their hands will go like this by themselves. They will, they will go up by themselves. It's kind of, kind of interesting how God created the human body to do certain things like that. So, but I, wanted to, I only wanted to start that way because um, if you really did it, it gets really stiff. I wanted to offer comfort. Come on, you, you, you can do this. You can open it up. There's no problem. It's not, it might hurt. That's all right. You're going to enjoy the pain. It's, there's nothing wrong with feeling painful or anything like that. So I wanted to offer you comfort because I think um, Paul, tonight, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Is um, Have you ever, I think he tells us some important truths of how we can, um, um, that God wants to give us comfort. In, in, in our time, in this day and age, back there when he was talking to the Corinthian church, he talked to Corinthian church, he wanted to give them comfort, and I think it's the same things that he wants to give us today. I mean, I don't know how many of you, um, any, anybody ever scuba, scuba dived here? 
Nobody? Me either. No. All right. Was it, was it fun? It was all right. So, but um, a lot of times, why do they jump backwards, Gary? They, uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, brother. But um, anyway, back to what we were talking about. So, um, you know, a lot of times when, a lot of times, I think right now with everything going on in our world, I, I think Paul kind of gives us some ideas of how to offer, give us comfort in times of the things that are happening in our world. Um, sometimes you get caught, um, sometimes you get caught in that, um, oh, what I want to call, ever been caught in a current um, and you can't come up for air and it just seems like, you want to come up for air. You want to come up for air, and you get up for air, and you go, and you get, and you go back down. And I don't know if you ever felt that way before, where you just, it just feels like you just can't get up. It just seems like one thing happens after another, and one thing happens after another, and one thing happens after another, and you're going, when is this going to end? I can't get, I can't get enough air or enough breath to keep going. It's like when I went to, um, me and my wife once went to um, um, Myrtle Beach, and we also lived up in Michigan by Three Oaks, which. Is right right down here by Lake Michigan and I remember going to Myrtle Beach and we went out and the tide was down we went out in the middle not in the middle of the lake we, the ocean we went out pretty far and it was pretty sand, sandy I said let's just walk and get our exercise instead of walking the sand let's just walk in the water it was pretty calm and so we begin to walk and and we just walked and walked and as we continued to walk we got to a place where the waves seemed to be coming in a lot farther now I've read lots of signs that you know uh, if you get caught in that riptide, you're supposed to swim to the right or swim to the left, or you just go out with it, and then you and never, never panic and swim. Um, try to swim with against it and all that. Well, me and my wife were walking, and she somehow got closer in the shore, but I didn't. And I remember very vividly of feeling. Like, I don't think I was caught in a riptide, but the waves were coming in so hard. Um, that all of a sudden there's just like no bottom to the bottom to the bottom and you're trying to trying to swim or you're trying to get to the side and I said oh this this can't be what's happening to me so so I, I tried to swim toward shore and as much as I tried to swim so far I can tell you I, be, I begin to panic um, and I think that's what happens when we have things come in our lives where there's two things that happen we, we begin to panic Any, anybody ever panicked here anybody all right. What, what, what was one one thing you panicked about? Anybody want to share? You can't remember. All right. All right. Well, I panicked because I was I felt like I was in a riptide, and I I go, Lord, this can't happen. Not, this is not about me, and I'm sw swimming as hard as I can, stopping, trying to touch the bottom, and I go under again. And I go on. Yes, Gary. All right. That would be panic. That would be panic. You're right. So, so I had the same thing. I was trying. And I, there's panic. Another thing that came about with me, I think, when we we have trouble or, or we don't have comfort or we're just afraid, is that you get afraid. I mean, you just be, you become fear. You become fearful. You try to fight against. You try to fight against the current. You try to do everything you possibly can. And you, I even had in my mind saying, "This is not happening to me." I've read all the signs. This, this, this is just not happening to me. I'm not. And um, so you become frightened, scared. And by the end, by the, finally, I made it to shore. I did make it to shore. But my wife looked at me, and she could tell I was dead tired. I was, I was worn out. I was fatigued. And it just um, it took a long time um, to catch my breath um, and to get enough air. And so um, tonight... I thought we we just kind of look because I think um what we're dealing today is um is um I think God wants to remind us in this time and age is that He's the one that gives us comfort um, all the time. He gives us comfort all the time and so easily. It's like me reading the signs of going that way. I'm supposed to go that way, away that or that way when there's this current. 
how easy I forgot, and I try to do it my own way, and I swim against current instead of trying to go where I'm not I'm supposed to go. And we forget so easily the com- things that God provides. And so tonight, um, I want if you I have it actually on screen here, so maybe. All right, I want to read a couple of verses to you. Um, just to get us started tonight. Well, before I, before I do that, um, you know, um, I've read a couple things this this week with everything going on that um, that probably one out of two people um, in this day and age experience um, have very much issue health issues um, are dealing with health issues. They even said the, um, the um, see, said that one out of four youth. Um, this past year will be taking their life. That is what's happening in, in our world. Paul, and I think Paul even warns us to help us with this truth. And that, that was scary. The CDC said, said that. Not at this time, I don't know if I trust the CDC <laughs> anymore or not in what they say, but those are the things that they're, they're, they're just conveying conveying to us. And even today, and I'm praying with the pastors, um, they were sharing how many um, people had um, teens have committed suicide this year in, in, in their area of churches. And I, and I was just kind of shocked about that. And, but it just makes me real. I mean, with everything that's piling up on us, everything that's going around in our world, the, the court yesterday, the social justice thing, politics, people losing jobs, um, having to wear masks in church, all the things that you can think of over and over and over that we have to, de- have to deal with. I think um, it, just, it piles up. It makes us panic. It makes us fatigue. And we forget, I think, sometimes um, that God gives us comfort. So um, that's what I want to do tonight. Is I just kind of want to focus on that. To have, I just want to remind you um, that you can have confidence that God can be your comforter in all things. I guess that's what I, I want to just remind you. It's like I, I have a friend um, who has an inhaler. He has, he can't breathe at times, and what's interesting, um, well, actually, he's not my friend. But what's interesting is is that when he has his inhaler in his pocket, he feels more confident of going anywhere that he wants to, that he doesn't even think about his asthma when, that that will ever come. But when that inhaler is not in his pocket. He has more anxiety because he realizes that that if if he was to have an attack, he would not have his exhaler with him, and so he has more anxiety when he's not with him. And um, and it, I, I hope you I hope you understand that is that um, he, it's it's almost like um, so like um, when I think of that what I guess the question is what do you have in your pocket? I mean, we have God's word, but what do you have in your pocket? Um, just like he has that inhaler, it kept him from, if he had it in his pocket, he was more likely not even to have, have to use it at all. Um, wasn't even scared. I'm not, he would never have an asthma attack. But when it wasn't in his pocket, he, he, would have, he would have so much fear that I'm going to have an attack that he would bring anxiety on himself that he would have an attack. And it's just kind of interesting how that, how that works, that more likely need that he did, but most likely... When he had it in his pocket, he didn't need it. And um, I think that's kind of just when I look at this tonight at 2 Corinthians, I think that's what Paul wants to tell us to, to tell us tonight, is to think about that, that. To think that God is going to comfort, I guess, to think that God comforts that way um, in our life. That it's like, I have the assurance that God's going to comfort me. It's in my pocket. and It's always going to be there. And every time I come, every time something comes, I have the assurance and comfort that God's going to comfort me during this time of trouble and all that and it's because it's in my pocket. But when it's not there, I don't know what to draw on. And we forget that at times. So, so um, here's that would probably be the question I would ask you t- tonight is what is in your pocket? And no, don't take your pocket. Don't take your phone out of your pocket or anything like that. Are you ca- That will give you care and peace. So here's what, here's what Paul says. All right. Here's what Paul says. It's out there on, on your screen. He says, the God of all comfort who come well let me read the whole let me read the whole verse it says praise be to God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us 
in all our troubles so that we can have comfort comfort those in any troubles with the comfort we ourselves have received from God all right so that's the that's the over praise be to God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God and so when I when I look at that verse what, 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 when you look at this part of this verse, what's, what sticks out to you? Anything stick out to you? Comfort? All right. Because there's enough comfort to pass on to others. All right. Anything else? All our troubles. Very good. All right. That's, that's, what, that's what I caught, Tiffany, is that the God of, the, the God of all. I mean, Paul could have said, the God of, of comfort, who will comfort you um, in your troubles. But he puts, it's kind of, Paul says, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. And I think some, that's, that's, what I, that's what I like, that we, we miss sometimes, that it's not that God might do that, it might, God will i mean he didn't have to put all in there at all paul didn't have to but he puts it in there to remind us that god of all the god of all comfort is the god who comforts us in all our troubles and um i don't know about you but that just that just makes me feel good <laughs> and all that and I, I and at the same time when i say that i know some of you um maybe here or online those of you who are listening um a lot of times when, when we say that we, we we at times can um but you just it just reminds me that all all conflicts all troubles all comfort is all all comfort for all our troubles and when you have i think when we can have that in our pocket lots of things can change in our life um, it just changes how I think it just changes how we process things in, in our times of trouble um, so I, I, I like that and um, you know one of the things I'm, I'm reminded of when I, when I read that we, we all, we all, you all have troubles right nobody and sometimes I think when we read that of all comfort and comes in all, all of our troubles I think sometimes I don't, I don't want to I don't think Paul's trying to minimize your troubles I mean, because we all have troubles. I don't think he's trying. Because I can say, I can, I can say lots of times, you know, God is our refuge, is our strength in our times, in our darkness, in our times of trouble. And people say, I can hear people sometimes echo in my mind, but Pastor Jeff, you don't have the same troubles I have. You, don't, you your life is great. Um, your life is great, and your life is doing good. You don't have the troubles I. And I don't think Paul is trying to minimize your troubles. I, I don't think he's trying to. I, I, if anything, I think he's trying to remind you to that his comfort is bigger than your pro, than your troubles. I think that's what he's trying just to remind us that God's comfort is bigger than our problems. And don't I don't think he's trying to minimize them, saying you know what your troubles aren't that big of a deal. Um, I think he's just trying to remind us, yeah, your troubles are a big deal, but I provide comfort in your times of all your troubles that you face so um so the question is um tonight is what's in your pocket is that what you believe so here's what here's what i here's what i here's what i came up with if um as i read that i said okay god gives us all the comfort we need for all the troubles we face that's the how, how do you feel about that you agree with that amen all right God gives us all the comfort we need for all the troubles we face. And I, and I really believe that. I, I, I mean, that's, sometimes that's hard to swallow, but, but it is. He gives us all the comfort. If this Paul's words are true, that he gives us all the comfort we need in all the troubles that we face. Um, it's a, I guess, I guess the, the word picture how could I put it's like when, when, when I go when I go home my wife has a ottoman and you open it up and it's full with comforters 
and um, I take the comforters out and I'll lay on the on the couch there and the comforters on the couch sometimes the comforters out of that ottoman are not very big sometimes and they don't cover my my feet um, you cover up and you try you put, put them down you cover your feet and your it's right here and then you pull it up and it doesn't cover your feet I know what you're thinking well pastor Jeff will just wear socks uh, all right I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty crazy, but I'm not that crazy, all right? Um, and so the word picture, I guess I could see here is that if you were to look the definition pie of comfort, I didn't look the definition, but a, a comforter is probably something that's supposed to comfort or it's supposed to cover your entire body. And it's supposed to keep you warm and safe. And that's what I think, this is what I, the word picture I believe is, that I could picture is, is that God is all comfort. So his comforter is as big and as wide and as long as all your problems. And it, when more come on, it's not like my toes are sticking out. He, the comforter just gets bigger and bigger and larger and larger that he comforts us no matter what it is. And that's, that's the best word picture I could kind of think of right, right now what Paul's talking about. So whatever you need, just... It just it's just a cover so any thoughts I'm, I'm kind of talking but any, any thoughts what's your what's your thought process tonight what, what questions do you have or what you're thinking or in the notes I, I I'm just putting notes there so you can follow along with where I'm at or might not even follow along might not even follow along with those notes but just any any thoughts all makes sense right you can, I can say okay you're dismissed you can go home you'll have no more troubles and you'll all be comforted and all, all the rest of the night so rest of the year rest until you die right and it's the way it should be so well it's interesting that, um, that was just part so if you but if you go through um, first second Corinthians there's um, some other verses um, that, that that was what I wanted to tell you. God gives us all the comfort you need for all the troubles that you face and that's not in the bible that's just what i came up with with it from that so um but i'm gonna read we're gonna read paul paul you, i know one of the things you look at paul and say well paul had no troubles ha. um let's 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 <laughs> let's look at some of the problems that paul had all right um if you have your bibles or it will be up here on the screen but second corinthians 11 if you go to second corinthians 11 23 verse 28 i it's supposed to be the NLT, so I forgot the L. Um, but it says, here's, here's, here's Paul's problems. All right, look at, look at this. They are, are they, they, kind of hard. They, are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a, a, a madam, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder. I have been in prison more often, been whipped times whipped times without without number and I faced the death again and again five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes three times I was beaten with rods once I was stoned three times I was shipwrecked once I spent a whole night and a day adrift in sea I have traveled on many long Long, long road. Oh, I missed a word. I have faced danger. I think. Let me think here. Oh no, nine lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Okay. Yep. I have been traveled. See how much it happened. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities in the deserts and in the seas and I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not I have worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights and I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm then besides all this I have daily 
burden of concerns all my of the life three times three different times and that's kind of interesting in this part of his thing he says three different times I begged the Lord to take it away now I always wonder what was it that Paul had that um what he, he always called it the thorn in the flesh what I always wonder what was that thorn in the flesh that he had any, any observations anybody have any clues because no, no no commentary really yes Nathan Okay. Okay. I, I gotta remember that when I preach too long. I'm sorry, my eyesight was going bad. I like that though. So I like that. So okay. That's a good thought. I never thought of that. I'm just wondering. good that's that's very very good all right that's possible too that's possible too so any other thoughts just mm -hmm. he doesn't Peggy, I like that too. All right. Yeah, it, it doesn't say. But what's interesting, he says three different times. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And what did the Lord give him the answer? Three different times? Three different times God answers. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Isn't that something? I mean, that, that I, I, never, I never noticed, because it's, it's funny how you can read the Bible and you read it so fast that you don't see like the alls or the, or, but like you get to this, you could go three different times, I begged you until the Lord to take it away. And each time the little Lord said, and you missed, you missed that, that he asked, he, he begged. I mean, three times, like me getting on my knees, sweetheart, can I have another Lego, please, please? I, I want to buy this. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out how to pay for it later um, and all that. So, and she says, no, no, no. And then I buy it anyway. So anyway, so that's just kind of in our weakness. And so when I look at that, that just kind of reminds me um, in, of that, that Paul had lots of weaknesses. Paul had lots of troubles. And uh, I mean, we, we think we have lots of troubles, but um, there's a lot more troubles that he had. But in the end, each time he said, my grace is sufficient, my power and works best in all your weaknesses. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that my power in Christ can work through me. And so no matter what your troubles come, God gives you comfort and he gives you the strength in all your troubles, like we said, in all troubles to make you Paul praised the Lord in his in his in his weaknesses, and um, we should too. So, just something that just kind of God gives us the comfort that we need, um, and it doesn't end there. Um, if we went on, if you go on in Corinthians, um, he goes on and says in verse twelve, chapter twelve, verses eight to ten, he says, "That's why I take." <laughs> That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer 
for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And just some kind of a good reminder there as well that we have troubles and all that. So, and you know, I'm, you had that a few years ago, Gary. Okay. 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 All right. And, that, and that's and that's a good reminder because. Um, you know, a lot of us can look at troubles and we go, well, I don't, if, I was him, if I was them, like you, you might have, a, you, let's say that you have a child that just is um, very disabled and you see how people take care of them and you, sometimes you go, I don't, know if, I don't know if I could handle that. <laughs> or you see something, something, something happening in someone's life and you go, I, I, I don't know if I could handle that. And I think God gives us the comfort to handle anything. We just sometimes miss that and all that. Um, and that let's see here. He goes on and he says, And our hope for you is this, is firm, because we know that we, just as you, share in our sufferings. We also, we also in you. Nope, oh, nope, oh, sorry. Also in you. There is another trans translation, the um, NLT, that was the NIV, um, gave a word. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, yeah, in Romans 12, 8 and 10, it, 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 it says sufficient. The word is sufficient, that God is sufficiently providing all um, our, when I go back here, it says that he's got pleasure in my weaknesses and in my insults and in my persecutions and my trouble and suffering in Christ. And somewhere it says, and I think the NIV says it, it's efficient, um, that he's always there. Um, maybe it's back there. Make sure I didn't miss it. Nope. It's, it, but it reminded me, efficient, I looked up the definition, is always enough. That, that's what efficient means, that God is always enough. He always gives us enough of what we need. So, um, and so we, when you look at that, um, mm -hmm. there you go. Thank you. So if you have a weakness, how many, how many of you just celebrate in, in your weakness that you have right now? Just, oh, this is great. I just, I just, I just love this. Um, I'll be, I don't like it all the time. <laughs> um, who does? And it's so easy to forget sometimes that but God is our comfort. Again, we, if we go all the way back to that one verse at the beginning of Paul, God gives you all the comfort you need in all the troubles that you face, no matter what. So, um, any questions? Any thought? Any thoughts? I don't want to. Uh huh.
Pretty good, Nathan. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Weaknesses and all that. Very good. I like that. That's possible, Greg. That's possible. So, I mean, a lot, you bring that a lot of commentaries and a lot of things don't give the answer. We don't know for sure, but they give a lot of those details that many of you have answered with tonight um, of that. So um, I, I, I do not know what it is, but um, sometimes I think God gives us troubles because troubles come to, to humble us and remind us of who he is like um, Peggy said tonight you know that so and I think sometimes when we go through troubles like if we go at the end again here that that one that we take that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in my insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ for when I am weak I am strong I think I put in your notes. Yeah, I did put in your notes. Um, that when Paul says he takes pleasure in his in the pressures, um, this verse right here just kind of that when I am weak, I am strong. When I have hardships and I have troubles, I put in your notes, how much more do we need, how much more we receive. So, so sometimes I think maybe our hardships and our troubles, the more... <laughs> I hate to say it, but the more troubles and hardships we have, the more we'll receive of God's love and grace and comfort. Um, it's like it's like it's like taking a spoon and um, saying, "God, this is how much comfort I want today." And He said, "That's all you want." And he fills your spoon up, and that's that's all you get. And then one day you say, "Man, I need a lot of comfort," so you get a semi truck and, and you pull it up to the altar and say, "He opened it up, God, I need this semi truck filled today because I need this much comfort." And he said, that's all you want. And he opens it up, and he fills it up. And he, I think that just kind of kind of reminds me. That's what, that's what I picture when Paul says, when we have troubles and conflicts and the things come our way, I'm, I'll give you all the comfort and strength that you need um, when you want it. Like, like I said at the beginning, what's in your pocket? Um, what do you hold in your pocket that you just, you, you just know? This, this is, I need, God, I need this comfort today. This, I know this is going to be a big day here. I fill up the cement truck today. Um, I just need it because um, I'm not going to get through the rest of the day. Or I, I, sometimes we just we just need a little bit. Um, just depends how much you want um, in that. So, um, any other any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? I think that one the last that let's see. Here. Very much, Gary. Very much to share with others. Very much, because that that was part of that verse that how God comfort us. We need to comfort others because He's comfort us. Very, very good. So, and yeah. So, um, and this verse right here, just to remind you, is, is that God kind of comforts you when you're not alone. When God kind of comforts you is when you know. You're just not alone. Our hope is, in, is, is for you is firm because we know that that just as you shared in your suffering, so also in I. I, I think there's supposed to be either so also in you, and that we just need to um, be ensured that we're not alone in this, that we're all together in this, and all that. So, you know, um, in Elisha, I don't know. If, in the, this book of Elisha, I, I think you remember one day I had a big bl blazing fire up here on the on the altar when Elisha went up and he confronted the um, the, the bad guys and um, he they built an altar and they called um, they said call on your God bring fire down from heaven and they went around dancing and um, asking their God they called on the prophet of Baal bring fire down from heaven and it didn't happen and finally Elisha 
dumped water and cut the meat up and dumped seven d bottles of water on the on the altar. And then he called from God, and let them, and they came down and said the fire came down and it licked up the water and it licked up the stones and it licked up the, the beef and it licked up all the wood and everything and everything was destroyed. And um, someone's texting me. I'm trying to figure out who's texting me. Oh, my son. Uh, when did you know it? Um, and yeah, so um, so I, I, it's kind of funny. I had an evangelist that, oh, it's kind of off the, off the cuff. I had an evangelist who would carry his phone up on, on the platform. So like if I, if I was good enough, which I'm not, but he would carry his, and you could text him. He'd give you your number at the beginning that you could ask him questions as he was preaching. And he would stop and he'd answer the question. I said, you gotta be kidding me. And then I watched him. He's really good at it. And someone, someone, someone would crack a joke, and he'd be going, and he'd get the text, and he, he'd look, he'd pause just for a second, and, and then he, he, would, he would read the joke. Someone just sent me out there in the audience from phone number, da, 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 this is the joke, and everybody would laugh. But he, it was Adam Davison, and he's, he's just really, really, he just, that, he, he's able to do that. I don't know how in the world he's able to do that. I would go, what, 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 what's going on? So anyway, that's a sidebar. That was always funny. That just, that's just kind of, kind of mine, so... Um, but anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, Elisha. And um, what's interesting, when I look, you look at, when I th think of Elisha, after that is all done, he goes off the mountain, and he's exhausted. Um, he's worn out. He's tired. And I don't have that scripture up here for you. I think it's in um, Second King, yeah, First Kings 19, 4, and 5, and 11. So, but... Um, he gets to a tree, and he fall, falls down exhausted, and he, he falls asleep. And a few minutes later, well, a few minutes, a couple of days later, or a day, or I don't remember, an angel comes by and gives him food to eat. And it doesn't say, get off your, get off your duff, let's go. He gets the food to eat, and then he falls and goes back to sleep. And I think sometimes that's something God wants to give us in times of comfort, is, you know, just solitude quietness um, just the quiet the pause from all the distractions and just the wait on God and the still in the moment of what he wants to give us um, I, I have the privilege of coming here at 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning and this place is empty um, I can come in here and I can sit in here and none of you are here um, it's kind of kind of it's kind of fun it's kind of it's just quiet quietest place once in a while you can hear the motorcycles zipping by and, and stuff like that but it's the quietest place to be and you're, you're welcome to come and experience anytime you want in the morning so and that so but um it's just just sitting there and just being quiet and um, don't you have the lights on or anything or the cross on just being quiet knowing that you're Kind of sitting in the holy of holies and just being quiet and letting the Lord just kind of talk to you. What would you want? I can do that at home too. Nothing wrong with that. Um, sometimes I can get distracted. I'm, I'm waiting for the nice warm weather and I can go on my back porch or something like that. And I'll probably get still distracted by the birds or something like that. But it just reminds me. That's when I think of Elisha. He 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 just he waited for the moment and he got refreshed in the silence. Um, God gave him the food and finally God comes back. What does God say? get up let's go and um he says uh, get up let's go and Elijah said I don't want to go and he says to him you know you have seven you just had this great miracle happen on the mountain you have seven thousand people who just watched this miracle who are with you and he says get up and go with them um it just kind of reveals that the presence and connection is with God that he gives us comfort but he also gives us comfort as people be together and so that's just kind of I just kind of throw that out as a last minute thing as we think about um, as just as you look at struggling with and Elisha he struggled with depression he struggled with health issues um, after all that and yet God pulled, pulled him through so anyway any questions any any thoughts did a lot of talking tonight didn't want to do that so but just just thoughts Well, this is what I want to. This is what I want us to read together tonight. I 
in Psalms, uh, Psalms 39, 18. It's out, of the, it's out of the message. So if you look at the NIV or anything like that, this is what the message says. I'm going to read it. Into, it says, if your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. Um, and I, I, that, that speaks wonders to me because I, it's just... I like the message sometimes. Um, it just translated it's in the human, but I can understand it. <laughs> um, it just, I, there's many times you feel like you've been kicked in the gut. And um, when you've been kicked in the gut, he's there to help you catch your breath. Um, and I think that's what comfort is. Um, he's there to, like I said, I, being in, you can be in the waves, you can be out in the undertow. And you're trying to strive with all the things going on in our country and the things around our workplaces and all that. And you wonder, how can I catch my breath? Well, that's, that's how you do it. That's how you catch your breath. So let's just read this together. All right, Psalms 34, verse 18. Let's read it together. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your love and your grace. And I thank you for every person here tonight. Um, Lord, um, I don't know how everybody's week's been. I don't know how the week has started. I don't know what's on their minds or um, what you do. And Lord, I know there's not one of us in this room that doesn't have troubles, anxiety, stress, tension, worry. We all have it. We're human. But Lord, it's so thankful to know that um, in all those things that you are can provide comfort in all our troubles and you'll give us the comfort that we need for what we ask for and if we ask for more you will receive more if we ask for more 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 we'll receive more and sometimes Lord um, I personally I, I forget that um, in this day and age in the United States of America, all of us here, I can do it. It's kind of like, I can do it myself. And um, Lord, just remind us time and time again that you are the God that gives us comfort in, in all things. And um, So Lord, I don't know what everybody's facing here today, but I just pray in just the, in the quiet and this um, moment, Maybe there's something we just need to express to you, um, not out loud, but just um, to whisper it to you of, Lord, this is where I need help. Lord, this is where I need um, more comfort and strength. Lord, this I don't know what to do. <laughs> but it's t like Tiffany said tonight, I feel less stress and and about a certain thing of money and Lord I I just we just pause here and we just if there's something you lay on our hearts or minds just to offer to you we just offer it to you
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Anything else tonight? Anything? Don't want to make you leave. I don't have any food. So, sorry. So, any thoughts? Any? Oh, you are dismissed. You are free to go. Enjoy the nice sunshine. It's not white outside anymore. So, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for coming, whoever worshiped with us online. We're glad you were here tonight and, and all that. We miss you. And um, if you're joining from another continent or country or another state, um, tune in on Sunday morning at 1010. Worship with us. So, good night, everybody.